Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael, and for Fran Stoddard. And for this month's Bird Notes program, we're going to learn about the results of Audubon Vermont's annual Birdathon. Joining us from the Green Mountain Audubon Center in Huntington is our bird expert and conservation biologist, Mark Labar. Mark, always great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Hey, always uh, great to be here, Will. Uh, nice to see you um, to chat with today. So this Birdathon, first of all, what is the Green Mountain Audubon Birdathon all about? So, you know, Birdathons are basically fundraisers that we do, and we try to see as many bird species as we can in 24 hours. And we uh, reach out to folks. Birdathons are done uh, by National Audubon, by Audubon here in Vermont. Um, in order to, you know, bring awareness to the birds that are out there, to raise some funding for the nonprofit, um, to uh, get, uh, you know, our staff comes together to do the birdathon together at the Audubon Center. Uh, so it's a great kind of social atmosphere when we're out there. And uh, it's just fun, you know, to try to beat last year's uh, number and get more species than you did the year before. So you're raising some money, you're having yep. fun with the staff, you're bringing in uh, people from all over. So what did you see during this 24 hour period? Yeah, so this is a good one. We, um, you know, we try to do it as a team. And so we usually start in the evening and then we'll go through the following morning and day and try to, you know, whatever we get. And one of the best ones we got this year, which we don't normally get was a bay breasted warbler. Now, this is a species that breeds further north than us, and we really only pick it up during migration. We time the birdathon, so it's a time when, you know, most species are most of, you know, the highest number of species are in Vermont. So this was a, this was a really um, a good bird for us. Um, and then, you know, when we're doing the birdathon, you know, the warblers are always fun to see. This is a magnolia warbler. This was one that we saw, um, a species we saw right in my backyard, uh, feeding in the uh, crab apple tree that I have on the insects and the flowers there. So, uh, you know, all these birds are brightly colored this time of year and uh, they're just fun to see. Uh, a bird that uh, we also got in my backyard, which breeds there, uh, the American red start, another warbler, and this is the male. Um, in all his finery with that black and orange and um, not an uncommon bird for us, but, um, you know, still uh, to see this time of year in, you know, all their splendor is really awesome. And for someone like you, you're not only seeing all this color, but you're the expert so you can hear it before you see it. Correct. And oftentimes what we try to do with the birdathon is at least two people of the group have to see it or hear it. That way we get a confirmation. And oftentimes we're picking these birds up by song. For instance, that bay-breasted warbler we heard way up in the trees. And uh, once we heard it, um, we looked for it and, and that's how we found it. Well, and here's somebody uh, you couldn't miss. Yeah, the, you know, these are one of my favorites, the yellow <laughs> warbler. And again, they're in my backyard and they're singing um, all summer long, sweet, sweet, you're so sweet. But again, it, the only warbler that's completely yellow, the undertail coverts, the tail and the whole body other than those brown stripes. And then to throw, you know, another brightly colored bird in the mix, even though it's not a warbler, is uh, the scarlet tanager. Um, and we see these, they're a treetop species. So you, you, you kind of got to see them um, uh, when the leaves aren't quite fully out yet. Uh, that's the best time. They, you can always hear them, but to get a good look at them, once the leaves come out, it gets a little bit tougher. And just a quick reference back to some of the warblers that you showed us. You have some work, uh, part of a project that you do with warblers. Is that a, a overall a species that we're seeing more of in Vermont? About the same, a little less? 
Yeah, it depends on the species. You know, warblers are are a big group. Um, some some birds, like you mentioned, golden winged warblers are declining. Um, we're starting to see some new species like prairie warblers. So it really varies over the, the whole group. Uh, but, you know, the third week of May, end of May is the time to um, see all of them as they're either getting here or passing through here. Well, definitely a, a colorful bunch, and uh, I won't I won't forget the scarlet tanager. Yeah. Uh, even though I'm going to have to look up high and wait for maybe the foliage to come down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, moving along, some of the sparrows that you saw in the birdathon, Mark. Yeah. So you know we see a number of sparrows. This is always a good one. And again, when we do the birdathon, for the most part, uh, we spend most of our time right there at the Audubon Center. So we have a couple ponds, and this is the swamp sparrow, and this is a great. Um, you know, not uncommon bird in swampy areas, really nice brown rufous wings there and a little bit of gray in the face. Um, and then this year we traveled a little bit further afield and went over the hill uh, into Heinsberg and we came across this sparrow, which is pretty much the biggest sparrow we have. This is the Eastern Toki. Uh, and um, for those that like tea, that's its song, drink your tea. So uh, this was one that we had to travel to a little bit shrubbier areas um, in order to find. And once again, you can hear them oftentimes before you see them. Very much so. All right, you have uh, more colors, different species. Uh, who or what else did you come across? You know, I'm, I'm throwing uh, these next two in. The first one, the black-billed cuckoo. Um, unfortunately uh, for Vermont, this happens to be a good uh, spongy moth uh, time of year um, or year. And uh, cuckoos are one, one of the species that uh, takes advantage of those caterpillars. And so folks are hearing quite a few of them around this year. A really interesting species, big, but oftentimes really difficult to see because they hang um, in the shrubs and, uh, you know, tough to get a look at. Uh, but we did uh, see one of these on uh, the birdathon, and then this is just one. Of, this is my daughter's lullaby bird. This is one that sings us to sleep at the Audubon every night. Uh, it's a thrush, the Viri, um, and related to the um, hermit thrush, the state bird, and wood thrush. Uh, but this is a common bird that we see um, and hear mostly singing around the woods right behind my house. And I'm glad you added your com uh, the comment about your daughter, May. She has been with us on the program before, and I distinctly remember uh, at a young age her t talking about Viri's and what they meant to her. Uh, very great yeah, story. They, they do this veer, 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 and they often do it in the evenings, so you can hear it as you're kind of nodding off at night. So um, a, a great bird. And interesting to learn, um, that we have a friend who's eating the spongy moth caterpillar. They must be fattening up this late spring as we head to the summer because man, are they everywhere. They seem to be everywhere. And this is one of the few species that really takes advantage of um, those caterpillars. Uh, I'm imagining there were some waterfowl as part of your birdathon, yes? Yeah, well, we did get some waterfowl. We did get like um, not as many as we normally do, but um, you know, we did get some water birds. We just happened to be going by a pond and came across a pied-billed grebe. This is a new one to our list. Uh, this is a small water bird that you find um, dives for uh, its food. Um, so this was one that we did not expect at all, and um, we also, you know, saw a green heron which is a small heron that um, oftentimes we don't get on our birdathon um, at the Audubon there. So, um, you know, just some out of the blue birds and that's what's exciting about spending the day. Yeah, here's the green heron. He was in the same little pond. It was, we happened to be driving along and, you know, you've got five cars lined up and all of a sudden one pulls over and the rest pull over and everybody hops out. And so these were two great species we were able to see. And again, uh, speaking of the variety of what you're seeing here, there were hawks involved in this birdathon. Yeah, so we, you know, they can be tough sometimes. We saw a red tail and then we were lucky enough to pull in a broad winged hawk, um, which we also saw. So this is a woodland hawk. 
Um, they're fairly common, but because you're trying to do it in 24 hours, you don't necessarily, um, it's, it's never guaranteed. Uh, but this was a good one to add to our list as well, yes. And again, that idea, are, are hawks, uh, the raptor species, are they increasing in Vermont, staying about the same? I'm thinking of bald eagles. That We're going to put that in that same raptor category? Right. So um, bald eagles are certainly increasing in the state. They just got recently removed from the endangered species list. And all, all the other hawks, from what I know, seem to be pretty stable right now. Um, you know, they're not very common uh, because they're you know, some of the larger predators, but certainly red tails you see all the time. And if you're lucky, maybe a sharp shinned or a Cooper's hawk uh, scooting through the woods. So you're out for 24 hours. You're with friends, colleagues. Uh, you're, you're doing work that is near and dear to your heart. And there's a final species that you, that you saw that isn't necessarily unique. That's maybe the irony of it. It was the last species you saw. Yeah. So this, this is always the case with Bernathon. Some of the the birds that are most common that you see every day and all the time just don't show up uh, when you want them to. And so right at the end of the day, before the time limit, we pulled into the local grocery store and came across a house sparrow. You know, this is a bird that's all over our urban areas, around farms. Um, so we just had a good chuckle that uh, it was the last bird um, that we found on our list. So. Um, yeah, a great time. And, and again, thanks to all the people, including yourself, Will, that donated to the, um, to the Birdathon. It's a big help for us at the Audubon. Yeah. And we appreciate uh, the work that you do, Mark. It's outstanding well, I, and the time you spend with us. And this is where I need to point out that if you do have a bird related question, uh, you can certainly pass it along to Mark at the address on your screen or uh, include a picture and send him an email. His email address is mlabar at audubon.org. You send him some information and he'll try to find the answer for you on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. Once again, Mark, uh, thanks very much for being with us. We hope it was a successful birdathon, not only from the number of birds you saw, but also from a financial perspective. It was in both. We hit our, uh, we surpassed our previous bird record and we were able to bring in um, more than $25,000 actually. So uh, it's a big help and a big support. And again, thanks to all the people out there that, um, you know, that, that helped Audubon Vermont continue to do the work that it does. And we'll learn in the months ahead how you're using those funding. Thank you, Mark. That is our program for today. And we know you have choices. So thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.